Good morning. I'm King County Executive Dow Constantine. I want to thank everyone who's here today for this momentous occasion. I want to particularly recognize those who will be speaking today as well as those who've played a role in the construction of this facility and all of our elected officials and supporters. First, our partners with the Federal Transit Administration, uh, represented by FTA Region 10 Deputy Director Susan Fletcher. Uh, and uh, thank you, Susan, for being here. Uh, the mayor of the city of Seattle, Bruce Harrell. Tuck Willis City Council Member Kathy Hogarty. I also saw uh, council members Kate Kroeller and Deshaun Quinn. Uh, I also saw Seattle Council Member Sarah Nelson. Where are you, Sarah? There you are. Uh, from the King County Council, we have council members Joe McDermott and Rod Dombowski. I see Rod right there. Uh, from Seattle City Light, Amika Anyanwu. Uh, from Metro Transit, our General Manager, Terry White. We have, uh, that's good employees, that's good. <laughs> we have representatives from New Flyer, the company that developed the coaches that are going into service today. And uh, from Mobility House, Matt Kiska. Mobility House is the company whose technology is helping the chargers that supply the power to the coaches be able to talk to each other. And I'm sure there are going to be folks, elected officials and others I've missed. I hope you'll tell us so that we can make sure you're recognized before the end of the program. So it was a little more than two years ago, the, the missing two years in all of our lives, uh, that we gathered just down the road to announce the purchase of the next generation of battery electric buses. Uh, well, we gave New Flyer a challenge. Provide us electric coaches that can handle both our region's unique road uh, and landscape and also our commitment to take on climate change equitably and quickly. Well, then we had a global pandemic, and here we are two years later, and they have delivered. Uh, and we are celebrating the first of those coaches that is ready to roll today. This afternoon, yes. This afternoon, the first route that will go into service, the, the Route 193 will carry riders from Federal Way to Seattle's First Hill, free from carbon pollution without fossil fuels. Starting today, these coaches and this base will be a visible reminder of our commitment to confront climate change. It starts with local action, and there is no greater opportunity for us than in the transportation sector. Metro already plays an essential role in reducing greenhouse gases by offering people the opportunity to get out of their cars, get out from behind the wheel, and get onto dependable and reliable transit. And with these new battery buses, we're making our green fleet even greener. Just a single one of these battery electric buses will keep the equivalent of 21 cars worth of greenhouse gases out of the air and exhaust out of our lungs every year. Today's launch is also a reminder of the steps we're taking today and into the future to mitigate the impact pollution has had in this region, especially in communities of South King County. Now, as we move toward a green future, we will prioritize service areas for our new buses in neighborhoods that have been disproportionately impacted by pollution, by local ambient air pollution. Those are also communities that are and will be bearing the brunt of climate change. This facility and the future we are launching with it is a reminder of our regional collaboration that will be absolutely vital in doing our part and more to take on the challenge of climate change. And I am looking forward to hearing from Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell and many other leaders as we take this next exciting step. And then, with a little musical accompaniment from Foster High School musician Preston Hopp, we have yeah, Preston, where are you? There you are. We will see this innovative charging infrastructure and these next generation buses in action. 
And now it is my honor to introduce the mayor of the city of Seattle, Bruce Harrell. I'd like to thank King County Executive Dow Constantine so for so eloquently describing why this is such an important day, not only for our environment, but for our collaboration, for our race and social equity work, and for acknowledging everyone here from every jurisdiction, which leaves me no ability to introduce anyone when I say a few words. Thank you, King County Executive, for your outstanding leadership. I would like to recognize just one other person, if I could be so bold, and that would be former uh, State Representative Justin Farrell, who now heads up our Office of Sustainability and Environment. Thank you for being here, Justin. And again, I think what, in addition to the words that our, our executive said, that if there's one theme today, it's collaboration to fight a common enemy. Uh, it goes beyond race and social justice. It goes beyond socioeconomic levels. It goes beyond political parties. The common en enemy of, of global warming and our reliance on fossil fuels. So uh, we're proud to be here. So the S Seattle City Light, the utility in our po portfolio, came in early on this during the design process. That's when the partnership began. And I got to tell you, when I see these beautiful, what, what color is that, lime or green or yellow? What, what is that? What is it? What, green. Whatever those things are, they make my heart warm. Because not only do they stand out, it, it reminds me of this partnership that the city is having, not with just with the county, but with Tukwila, our fine leaders in our Tukwila City Council. But it reminds me that last I checked, when I get on an electric bus, the, the, the Tesla of buses, if you will, when I get on that, there's no line that says, you just crossed from Seattle to Tukwila or unincorporated King County. We say one Seattle, which is just our, our way of saying, we're all in this together. So let me simply close by saying that this project is one of the many that the city of Seattle will stand behind and with to fight and reduce greenhouse gas emissions and propel the city of Seattle towards our very aggressive climate action plan. It will serve as a model to show how we, uh, as a region, not just as a city, but as a region, will lead the charge toward transportation electrification. We'll ensure that all residents, all residents, will have a clean and greener future. We are committed. Under the Herald administration, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about homelessness and housing and affordability and race and social justice. We never, we never forgot about one of our most important issues of the day, and that is simply the air that we breathe the water that we drink, the planet that we will leave for our children, our grandchildren. So the progress we're making today toward our regional electrification future will require, again, continued work, collaboration, and leadership. And that's what we see today. And we're going to hear from another leader, a strong leader, Kathy Hogarty from our Tequila City Council. And thank you for having here, uh, inviting us to the, to the county area. I'm a little uncomfortable when I leave the city. Get a, little, get a little jittery, but certainly the council leadership and took well, you all make us feel right at home. I present to you, Kathy Ogarty. Yeah, relax, you're in Tukwila. Um, <laughs> as a longtime member of the King County Regional Transit Committee, and some of you know what that is, um, I'm honored to have the opportunity to welcome you to Tukwila, our wonderful city of Tukwila. Um, and I'd just like to do a reintroduce of my colleagues that are here today. Councilmember Kate Crowler, would you give a wave? And um, my senior council member and Metro's very own Deshaun Quinn, give a wave. Thank you for being Woo! here. And not well, and Preston, thank you so much for playing your <laughs> trunk because he's 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 another um, well-known community member. Thank you. Um, as a Tuck Willow member. Council committee member and RTC council member and RTC committee member, I've had the privilege of working with Metro staff over the year. And I'm going to take advantage of being at this podium right now to thank them for their great work. I've worked with you for a long time. Terry, thank you. Staff, thank you so much. Um, their commitment to collaboration, engagement, public outreach has been an inspiration. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, in 2021, I took a year off of the Regional Transit Committee and wondered how they could ever survive without me. But not only did they, the committee and staff 
survive, they thrived. And when I returned this year um, to RTC, the strategic plan, the Metro Connects and service guidelines were all spiffed up, updated and improved. And those updates included incorporating Metro's mobility framework, which reflects their commitment to increasing equity and reducing the effects of climate change. And that commitment to the reducing climate change is the reason that why we're all here today. Um, and the buses are here today. Um, thanks, Metro, for choosing to have your electric bus space here in Tukwila and making us the cool kids on the block. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and you can see by my smile, I, I am really excited about this. Also, thank you, it, it's great that it's located here in one of the communities that, it, that can be best served by um, one of our communities of color that, I don't, I'm not really quite how to, sure how to say this, that we, we're the ones that really are impacted by this. You can see we've got freeways all over the place here. We've got streets, and so thank you um, for this electrification. Um, and look at this innovation. It's all here in our backyard. Who knows, maybe some future dad in the neighborhood will bring his son or his daughter here to look at the buses and all this technology. And that kid will say, you know what? I want to become an electrical engineer. Right, Deshaun? <laughs> he and I had this conversation the other day. So we're excited that Metro is continuing its march to a zero emission future right here in Tukwila. And I can't wait to see these buses, um, as was said, the Tesla of buses rolling through our neighborhood. Thanks again and welcome to Tukwila. Good morning and welcome to the 8th Council District. <laughs> I'm Joe McDermott, King County Council member, and I'm not sure, Kathy, how we made it through a year on RTC without you. In 2016, the county and the council asked the question about what steps would be needed to create a zero emissions um, bus fleet. And I'm proud to be here to celebrate a major milestone in answering that very question. The council has supported key steps along the way in making this transition a true reality, both, both with the purchase of um, buses and with the construction of this very base. And while this base is located here in Tukwila, its impact will be far reaching. As chair of the King County Board of Health, I know that um, what is taking place I know that what is taking place to reduce um, health issues created by vehicle emissions around the region matters to communities, matters to communities locally. That's particularly why it's important that this is happening here at the South Base, where some of the communities most impacted by carbon emissions are centered in and around South King County. So this base also means helping out our region to meet re regional air quality standards, but also impacting local communities that are already bearing the, the brunt. Letting those whose health have been impacted by pollution breathe a little easier, which is really what our um, goal needs to be in all of our climate work. I want to congratulate everyone who's had a role in the development of this base, and I can't wait to see these buses on the road, maybe not with Executive Constantine driving, <laughs> but all good. And now I get to introduce um, our a key partner who actually powers this whole operation, um, 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 Emika Ananwu with Seattle City Light. Well, thank you very much, um, Mayor Harrell, uh, distinguished council members, uh, the administrator, all the people here today. I'm really thrilled to be here. Um, I happen to be here standing in for our general manager and CEO, Deborah Smith, who, in a sign of the times, regrettably can't be here because she's uh, finishing out an uh, uh, isolation period from a COVID diagnosis last week. So um, just, again, a sign of the times. But thrilled to be here and excited to uh, be part of this event. Uh, thank you all for joining us here today to mark this incredible milestone in uh, the electrification and decarbonization of our region. Transportation electrification really is a, an integral part of our utilities modernization journey. Electric vehicles, EV cars, may be the most visible of personal mobility uh, forms, but at Seattle City Light, we have identified and decided to 
prioritized the electrification of transit as a way to better serve our customers and the community and the region at large. When we created our Transportation Electrification Strategic Investment Plan uh, just two, about two years ago, um, in our conversations in the community, the top priority identified by community leaders and other community stakeholders was electrifying public transportation. And in this, as you've heard from some of the other speakers, in this uh, transition, we really have a duty to re-envision an energy system that elevates and uplifts communities throughout the greater Seattle region, but especially those communities that have been um, historically left out of important conversations and decisions around our energy system. There is, as you know, a direct benefit uh, from this work to those who rely on public transportation in terms of the reduction of um, air and noise pollution that impacts uh, communities greatly in this region. And with Seattle City Lights Carbon Free Energy, we're, we're really poised with these buses to deliver a triple win for those communities, for our environment, and certainly for our customer-owned utility, which itself is a community asset. And through strategic partnerships with uh, folks like our colleagues here at uh, King County Metro, I see my my key collaborator in the crowd, uh, in the crowd, uh, Diane Carlson, who um, and the team that we've worked with. Yes, please. Um, as we said at the beginning, you know, who knew two uh, government agencies had come together and um, you know be very innovative? But uh, this team really has pulled it off in some of the most interesting and challenging of conditions. Um, and so we're making great strides in the electrification future of our region. And uh, these coaches that you see here today are just the first of many that we hope to see on the road. So with that, on behalf of our GM and CEO, uh, myself, our entire City Light team, many of whom are here today, uh, I just want to thank and congratulate our colleagues at uh, King County Metro on this remarkable achievement. And with that, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, King County Metro GM and CEO, Terry White. Good morning. So it is starting to rain. If it starts to rain faster and harder, I'll talk faster <laughs> and try to get us out of here. Uh, first off, I too want to acknowledge our division director of capital, Diane Carlson, for her work to get us to this moment in day. Uh, and Diane, I have a tie on. So <laughs> Diane told me this is big. Wear the tie. So I have the tie on. And it is big, and I'm, I'm just so excited to see you all here in 3D and not 2D. Uh, that, that is worth it just for that piece. Um, I do, we have so many folks from King County Metro that made today possible, so I can't start naming names. But I do want to recognize the team, the greatest team out there when it comes to transit and mobility. And that's King County Metro, so if you can just give yourselves an applause. It is our incredible team that, that really addresses the current, the here, while we also get to prepare for the next. And here at Metro, we've always been excited about what's next while we're attempting to do the operational excellency every day. This base represents what's next. And we are excited to finally begin to put it to work. We're proud of how we have been an industry leader when it comes to clean air and moving and progressing towards better, cleaner, faster. In, 20, in 2004, we introduced our first hybrid diesel electric coach to our fleet. And a while later, we followed that up in 2017 with the first generation of clean battery electric bus. In 2020, Proudly, in the fall of 2020, we retired our last of our fully diesel-operated coaches. Yes. Big retirement party. We sent that bus out with a, I think, was it a golden tire? Golden tire? <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, as you've heard from Executive Constantine, today is the next step in our continuing commitment to cleaner environment for our riders and for our communities. 
This base will be home for the first 40 long range battery electric buses. And these coaches, as you've heard, are ready to go to work on routes that serve in our diverse communities. Communities that rely on this regional mobility network. Now, I'm very proud of the holistic approach that we used in building out our next generation fleet. Collaboration throughout the systems was vital because we needed everyone involved in our transition to zero emission. From the building of this facility to the training of our vehicle maintenance crews to keep this charging base powered up and moving vehicles. Our crews have worked hard to improve the motors of our hybrid fleet as well. Increasing the use of the battery electric component and decreasing and reducing the use of the diesel. Now to our operators out there, I hear from Harold occasionally about how incredible these battery electric buses are, how powerful and smooth and balanced they are. Now I gotta say I'm a little bit envious, Harold. Um, so envious because these coaches are so nice that I'm looking at how I can put some policy in place that allows for me to also drive some of these around. <laughs> Not over in the test area, out in the street. I want to be in the street. <laughs> now, at Metro, we're proud to be a model for transit agencies across the nation. The blueprint, if you will, that they can utilize to build out their zero emissions fleet. Because it can't be just about us here in this community. It has to be about all of us. All of us deserve our opportunities to thrive. This base is a testing separate charging infrastructure and will continue to focus on that charging that will benefit our mobility systems now and as we move forward. The official name for this facility is the South Base Test Facility. And as for what's next, next is development of our sister bases that will be constructed throughout King County with this technology in support of growing our zero emissions fleets. Next is the growth of our fleet as additional battery electric buses get delivered and then deployed into our service network throughout this year. Next is a future that has our own system operating a completely zero emissions free system by 2035 or perhaps sooner 35 2035 <laughs> did I say 25 35 <laughs> I'm always in a hurry as people know and next are the first of these coaches as executive Constantine Constantine said that will be meeting passengers this afternoon this afternoon to inaugurate their introduction into service. So our future is clean, our future is electric. And at Metro, we look forward to all of you joining us on this ride. Appreciate you all, thank you. So that little colloquy we had uh, was, is really illustrative of the challenge we have with combating global climate change. We have to, I mean, the, the formula is quite simple, really. We have to electrify everything. We have to make sure the electricity that is powering those electrified devices and homes and buildings and buses and trains is 100% uh, carbon free, and, and that's why we're so fortunate to live in the Seattle City Light area where they're providing us with virtually carbon-free electricity, but we have to concentrate on decarbonizing all the rest of the grid throughout our region and around the world. And then we have to recapture the carbon that cannot be prevented from being emitted and the carbon that has already been emitted. And the challenge we have here is that time is not on our side. Not only are we facing rapidly accelerating impacts 
from the carbon emissions that have happened over the last couple hundred years. But every day that we delay is carbon that's being expressed that will be circulating in the atmosphere for a thousand years unless we are able to recapture it. Do we know how we're going to accomplish these things? No, we don't. We don't know everything yet about how we're going to get to a zero emission fleet by 2035. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we're not going to commit ourselves to doing it anyway. And the same is true for decarbonizing the built environment. The same is true for recapturing the carbon that's already been expressed out into the atmosphere. We don't have all the answers yet. We don't have all the technology yet. But we do know that we have to do it if we're going to live up to our responsibility to this planet and to those who will inherit it. So thank you for being here today. <laughs> for a small but tremendously important step forward in us fulfilling our commitment. Uh, I'd be happy to uh, have the real experts here from Metro Transit help me in answering any questions you might have. Councilmember Nelson. Come on over. So this is the uh, how many buses can you charge? How long does it take to charge them? I'm going to add on how far can the 60-footers and the 40-footers travel on a single charge, and how many people can they carry? <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer to some of these questions. So, so the uh, first question was uh, how long does it take to charge? So they take about three and a half to four hours to fully charge. Um, that's all the way charged from all the way empty. Uh, the 40-foot bus will do about 220 miles on a full charge. And the 60-foot bus will do about 158 on a full charge. Um, Yeah, 120 people on the 60-foot bus, and 78. yeah, 78. Yep, 78. <laughs> the se the seating part, um, <laughs> but the rest of the technical stuff, I'm pretty good at. Is there any other questions, Far? <laughs> uh, there, will, there will be nine chargers, um, and they can all go at the same time. Other questions? I'm going to let you stay right here with us because okay. you probably know the answers. <laughs> Are there other questions? Okay, and we will also be able to charge other vehicles here, other, other fleet vehicles, uh, not just our, our buses, but uh, as Metro and King County continue to green our uh, fleet of cars and trucks, we'll have the opportunity for rapid charging here. Council member. Ah, Terry, you want to talk about why this is called a test center? Well, as the exec said, we're out in front. We like being out in front. We like testing for next. Uh, so we're charging testing uh, a variety of, of options, if you will. Uh, so we, we haven't necessarily settled on where we're going uh, completely. We know we're going to clean, uh, but in the process, Testing and seeing what else is out there potentially for us to, to utilize is where we see ourselves now. I'm going to bring Kevin in here as well to kind of share on Thanks. this. Thanks, Terry. Um, this facility is, indeed is a test facility. Technology changes. What we've built this facility, if you lo look on lane two, we'll, we're testing, we're trying to model and learn about uh, charging on route. If you look on these two lanes, this will be more, we're modeling the way we'll be charging on base typically. Also, you'll realize there's three different manufacturers that we're testing on this facility, and what we're trying to learn is what does it take to maintain, how do they behave. We're actually even micrometering every, every charger to be able to figure out the efficiency and what nuances that each charger comes along. This facility also is built on a standard, two standards actually. There is J uh, so basically the pantograph down such that any vehicle that is built to that facility 
technically can come to this facility and we can help one another. And we are partnering with other people so that we're encouraging people to build on it so that we can be able, to, along the corridor, with some transit, any, anyone community transit, even technically, uh, fleet, fleet manufacturers, if someone has a fleet, as long as they built to the standard, we should be able to accommodate them. Thank you. Thanks for an good. Very good. I told you we had experts. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Or do you want to see how it works? Yes. OK. So I'm going to turn to the pride of Foster High School, Preston Hopp, to sound the call.